the last picture here. So if you look, you scale tuberosity, you scale spine, lesser and greater sciatic notches, acetabulum articulus with femur. There is the sacral crest, median sacral crest, posterior sacral foraminus, sacral hiatus, sacral canal leading there. Sacral promontory is on the other side, here. You see the coccyx, sacral coccygeal joint. Lastly, if you uh, take uh, the os coxa and you remove it from the sacrum, there's going to be a surface there. So we talked about how there's a surface called the acetabulum for the head of the humerus, there's a glenoid fossa for the for the femur and glenoid fossa for the humerus. Here, if you remove it, there is going to be a fossa there as well. Okay, and it is called the auricular surface. So if you look here, this example here shows it being removed, and this is the auricular surface. My finger would be the sacrum, out the ala of sacrum would join like that, right into the auricular surface. Both this is the auricular surface, and if I remove the ala of sacrum and look at that, it too is the auricular surface. So the two auricular surfaces join together to form the sacroiliac joint. And also, when we said the conjoint ramus and the ischial tuberosity, ischial spine, there is an opening here that is called the obturator foramen. And it is, you can also see it here, the obturator foramen, and the site of passage of nerves and blood vessels and also muscle. Okay, so that's that. And also here is uh, just a simplified diagram. You can see, so this is the greater pelvis. So this would be the superior pelvic aperture this opening at this level and everything above this would be the is iliac fossa iliac fossa here this is the greater pelvis below is the lesser pelvis and then we'll talk about the pelvic diaphragm when we talk about the perineum and there is your acetabulum for site of attachment of the femur and there would be the level of the obturator form. Force is transmitted from the vertebral column. The weight of our body is transmitted via the vertebral bodies and then finally down to the base of the sacrum. From the base of the sacrum, it then goes up the ala of sacrum because as you go down, you end up going to the coccyx and that cannot be used for weight support. It goes up the ala of sacrum, the weight, the force of the weight of the body, goes into the iliac fossa, crosses the sacroiliac joint, iliac fossa, down the ilium, and then it depends. Okay, either it will go into the acetabulum and then into the femur, neck of the femur, then down the femur and to the legs, <coughs> or that's when you're standing. If we are sitting, that force will not go to the femur. It will go to the ischial tuberosity. And the way that the force is produced when we sit, when we sit down, we sit on this ischial tuberosity. And when we sit, this ischial tuberosity is pushed this way, and this one is pushed that way. So that kind of gives us a force, which we call the inferior tie beam force. And that is uh, what prevents and the pubic symphysis is very strong holds them together so if you imagine the two pubic tubercles when you sit they are pushed apart and that and they're not pushed apart all the way they're at a certain distance apart and then that no more and that allows stability and then we stand up sit on it stand up sit on it so to separate the force put upon these ischial tuberosities when we sit down and we stand up it goes to our femur and the legs so thank you for watching uh, this tutorial on the uh, pelvic bone we will next go into a little more detail of the vertebral bone specifically of the thoracic vertebra thanks for watching bye